Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me again. Uh, this is my second Elixir talk in a year, and I couldn't be more excited about this. Um, my name is Miguel Michelson. I am a web developer from Chile. I have 20 years in the web development, uh, but I have less than a year working in Elixir. <laughs> so although I'm not an Elixir expert, I worked in really intensely uh, with Elixir in lately and learned uh, a lot of things. One of the things that keep me going with the language is uh, mainly the lovely community. Uh, so I will ask the audience to please give an applause to all of uh, the people in the, in the community of Elixir that is helping uh, newcomers like me. Um, so in my previous talk in Elixir London, uh, I have shown how I port a large Rails application as a way of learn Elixir and Phoenix. And uh, I also shown how uh, that journey uh, led me to rewrite some of the libraries from the Rails core uh, to Elixir. So those libraries are active storage, which uh, in turn led, uh, led me to write uh, active job and Marcel packages. So active storage is for the storage and processing the files that you upload to the application. Uh, active job is some kind of middleware that uh, connects your background processor job. Um, and uh, Marcel is like uh, some kind of meme, meme type detector. Uh, so the trip was really, really fun. And my motivation uh, today for this project is al almost the same uh, as before, just for fun. And I, I've been founding, finding myself uh, inventing more and more pretext to work with Elixir. So um, the story of this uh, project uh, began with, uh, with a tweet. Uh, this was an old-timer idea that I wanted to, to build a service to store my, my audios. Um, but also I had this idea to uh, create an, some kind of indie record label called Ra Raw Version. Uh, so I took both ideas and uh, a month ago, and I was determined to build it. So my first approach um, was to do this in Ruby on Rails. So I have published this, this tweet on my Twitter timeline. Uh, I will write an open source version of SoundCloud Bankend. Uh, I, I hope to have a simple MVP in a month or less and release it to the world. So does, uh, does someone want to join? Uh, the tech stack will be uh, Ruby on Rails 7 with a, the with a symbols. So uh, a week later, <laughs> in a dramatic turn of the events, uh, I have rolled back the idea to have this on Ruby on Rails and I will go all in with uh, Elixir Phoenix and mainly for two reasons. Uh, the Elixir Chile, uh, the community of, of, the, of, of, uh, of Elixir in Chile, is a really enthusiastic community that is growing and manifesting the interest to join the, this project, so I, I couldn't say no. <laughs> uh, but uh, the second reason uh, is the Elixir, the language. Uh, the application now is running on the smallest uh, machine in Heroku. Um, that's uh, 5,000 megabytes, uh, and it's using just uh, a 12 percent of of the of the RAM. So um, that, that there is also no need to use Redis. So if the project scales, uh, it will reduce reduce on save cost to at least a, and a half. Uh, so what's raw version? Raw version is a platform. Uh, to build communities around audio. Uh, it may be a community of musicians or podcasters or whatever you like. Uh, and in the latest weeks, uh, it also became a way to do some publishing. So now it's a community audio driven with a magazine capabilities, or maybe it's a magazine that support a community of creators. I don't know yet. Uh, so the main challenges uh, when you create an audio uh, like SoundCloud application uh, with live view, because uh, this uh, uh, this project is heavily based in, in live view uh, with minimal uh, JS. So the first challenge is, of course, uh, upload the files. Uh, and um, I never 
did that before in live view. And uh, uh, I find out that, that there is a live view uploads or live uploads that are really, really awesome. Uh, also, the, the PIX process, processor or the post process of the, of the audio uh, that um, let you uh, analyze the, 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 the meta information and uh, that will let you um, uh, draw the waveform in the audio player as SoundCloud does, right? Um, also, uh, there is uh, the, um, uh, um, the, the the player needs to be uh, continuously played, so keep the, the audio player playing across the, the user navigation. And this could be especially complicated with server-side rendered uh, pages, but uh, not for live view. <laughs> um, and the stream audio files. So stream audio file files in bytes responses, so you can stream large files in chunks uh, accordingly. So for the, the file uh, uploads, uh, I'm using uh, my uh, implementation of active storage for Elixir. So I'm using my, my, my own library for that. Um, and uh, raw version was a good pretext to use and battle test the, this library. Uh, and uh, what's good in active storage? Well, active storage is a design. It's a, it's a, it's a really very powerful and really well integrated solution to handle not just the, just the uploads, but the storage mirroring and versioning of, of, uh, of the files. So you, you may have a sync or a sync uh, processing um, of, of the files and the versions. It's also handy for previewing the files that are not quite visible, like video, screenshots, or PDFs, and gives you canonical URLs that handles multiple uh, cloud services like uh, S3, uh, Azure, Google Cloud, and Disk. So, um, so for uh, in order to configure Active Storage, you will need uh, to uh, add some services. So, in this example, you can see uh, there's an Amazon service and a local service. So, one goes to the disk, and the Amazon goes to S3, of course. And you can add as many services as you want. Then, in, in for example, in, in, in your development environment, you can set uh, your main uh, storage service as local. And uh, for production, you can set your uh, remote uh, service as Amazon, but you can use whatever you like. And even you can set uh, the service you want to upload uh, in, in, the, in the upload itself. So it's really, really flexible. Uh, you can also upload uh, blobs or register blobs directly, uh, but also you can associate these blobs to a specific uh, models or ecto schemas. So to associate records, uh, you will need to add uh, this attached model and then uh, attach has one uh, and then uh, uh, create the, the proper associations. Um, then in the ecto chain set, uh, you can just call the process one upload to uh, process the uploaded file uh, as the attribute you configured uh, before in the, in the schema, and that's it. Uh, then, of course, uh, in the live view, you uh, may uh, allow the upload. Um, so, in the in the live view context, that there is this up allow upload function that accepts uploads. So this is specific to live uploads and not, it's not specific to active storage. And of course, in, in the forms, uh, you can use the list, this uh, live file input that uh, will enable the, 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 the uploads to the server. So fun fact is uh, the live uploads uh, are really powerful because uh, Heroku is known for block requests that uh, takes more than 30 seconds. And I find out that uh, with live uploads, you can uh, upload really uh, large files and uh, the, the, the connection will not be cut because somehow uh, the upload is, is not done by multi-part post request and is done by probably WebSocket. I don't, I don't know really, but it's really, really awesome. Uh, so once the file is uploaded, uh, we'll need a way to display it. And regardless, the files exist on the disk or the remote bucket. Active storage would be smart enough to serve the file. 
so the blog, blog URL returns the URL of, of the blog of the service. And um, this, is a, this returns a permanent URL for public files and returns a short-lived URL for private files. So this is especially handy for hiding authenticated URL. Uh, so you, you, you can put that, that URL behind a, a redirect so you can change your storage services without updating the URLs. Uh, the, the, there's also also the, the the variant URL, so you can you can have you 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 may upload uh, an image, for example, but you you want uh, to give the thumbnails, for example, the specific thumbnail. So variants are a transformation of the original image, and these variants uh, can be used uh, as thumbnails, avatars, etc. And Active Storage uh, generates variants and on demand and by download, downloading uh, the, the, the original image. And the image is transformed into a variant and is stored to a third party like uh, Amazon S3. So for the audio processing, uh, in order to display the, the audio waveforms, we need a way to extract the metadata. Uh, from the audio and, and pass that uh, to the audio player that will draw the, the audio representation. So for that, I, I've implemented uh, that in, in this raw version services peak generator, uh, I implemented two solutions. Uh, one was implemented with a audio web surfer uh, program. And this program uh, has solved quite well the, 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 the processing, but uh, in Heroku, it was somewhat uh, difficult to uh, install that. So uh, we ended uh, by uh, using the, um, the FFMPG with the with with this uh, command. That's basically quite verbose, but uh, it's, it does the, the work. Uh, it extracts the peak levels and gives you a JSON format of, of that. And then at the higher level, uh, the peaks command can be called from the Ecto context. And uh, the data will will be saved in a field in, in the track uh, table. So the the whole process of uploading the audio is uh, upload the, the file, uh, create the blob in the disk, uh, convert the the blob to MP3, and analyze its uh, a, a audio peaks. So in the beginning, uh, uh, this was made in just one request. And it worked really, really well, uh, but uh, we ended up by a adding uh, some um, some steps in a background process. Uh, so um, um, we we ended up uh, doing the the MP3 conversion in a in a oven worker, and then the process picks uh, in in the worker too. So that's it. Uh, then. Um, in the in the view, uh, this this peaks information are passed through uh, the HTML as an HTML attribute. Uh, so though that attribute will be handled in a in a Phoenix uh, JS hook, and that's it. So uh, whenever the, the the user navigates the site, uh, we need a way to prevent the audio player from stopping or restarting in some mode. So uh, we need to keep the audio playing regardless uh, of how the user navigates the site. So for that, it's th there is a really simple solution. Uh, LiveView added a sticky option for the live render function. The sticky option lets uh, LiveView remain active across live redirects, and um, even if it's nested with another live. View. Th there is a really interesting uh, uh, blog post about that in Fly.io. So you can search for that. Um, also, th th there is a uh, audio serving. So uh, uh, we, we are using the byte request, uh, and the byte request uh, occur when when the client asks for the server a portion of of the requested file. So the purpose of this uh, is essential to save bandwidth uh, usage by avoiding the need to download a complete file. And all only request uh, that the required uh, small section of, of the file. Uh, audio, uh, the partial content uh, has full support on major browsers, so uh, we are good to go. And it's basically the client asking for for some range uh, bytes, and the server uh, giving you the range that you requested. So for that, 
Active Storage gives you the blog proxy URL and the proxy the blog proxy URL uh, will uh, redirect the request of the file to uh, some kind of controller that um, basically is a canonical URL that will read the range headers of the request and, and, and deliver the chunks of the of the file of the, by, by the given byte range. And uh, if the file is remote, for example, if, if, uh, it's, if it's living in S3, it will only download a portion of the file and gives you that. Uh, so, so that's all. Uh, but there is a lot more, lot, uh, a, a lot more. Uh, for example, a playlist support and how we uh, communicate uh, from uh, hooks classes or hook functions in in uh, in Phoenix. Um, there is some uh, sort of. Uh, insight for for profiles, so you can uh, you, you can have a cool reporting system um, like time series of visitors and listeners, uh, the top countries uh, who who listens the most and stuff like that. Uh, we are using some specific uh, Postgres functionalities uh, in in this uh, powerful act querying the CLs. Uh, we have uh, some interesting hooks that you can look to, charts, model, maps, text editor. Uh, we have a complete blogging uh, application based in, in a React <laughs> editor that I that it makes. So this can this may sound like an hierarchy uh, in terms of we are uh, we are putting React on on this application, but uh, in a, in a really uh, minimal quote. Um, so uh, why not have the best from the both the both worlds, right? Uh, a way to uh, render um, a React application or React component in a hook is basically this this uh, pattern. Uh, uh, and recently, we are working on a ticketing ser service with a Stripe integration. So we are adding some cool techniques techniques like uh, deep nested forms and stuff like that. So yet there is a lot uh, to be done. So if you find the, the project interesting, please clone the repo and play with it. Maybe install it on a server and start start your own music industry. And of course, if you like the, the project, uh, please give us a start in GitHub repo. Thank you very much.